he could have stayed at least one more season at PSV. You know, he literally just went, changed to another PS team, except his G, better team. You know, and especially leaving on... Hello, welcome back to everyone that's tuning into our channel, American Ultra Screw here today, bringing to you guys another transfer roundup, very well requested. I mean, a lot of you guys have been commenting about it. It's been a while, some things happened, some didn't. I'm here today joined by Brayden, Akil, and Jeff. I mentioned we are off right after the Miami game, into Miami game, Messi scoring that goal at the end. The goal, you see it on Brayden's background, Akil's name and Jeff's name as well. We're gonna get started just with a brief mention of a rumor that we reported last time. Pulisic to Milan, that's official already. He's played a game, uh, had two assists, had a really good performance. I mean, granted it was a, one of those mock friendlies that they do in Italy. And Brandon Aronson, uh, also official for Union Berlin. Perfect move for him. Was it deserved or not? I don't know, we can maybe brief, uh, briefly mention that. But those things are, are official let's get to the rumors that are still to be sorted uh i'll start with mckinney we've talked about this guy for the entire window so far they're seeing roma come in for him but they don't have enough money he's gonna have to get a pay cut in italy it's really hard for him to say he is linked to borussia dortmund that's obviously a little bit of a suspicious one because he's had a link with schalke before but anyways dortmund are reportedly uh looking around lurking around for him Aston Villa, which I really like. I'm just gonna say that's my perfect place for him, in my opinion, if I could choose. And Atalanta, he has rejected an offer from Galatasaray. That's the only official offer the Juve got. And he's gonna have the opportunity to play uh, in the Juve preseason just to get that little cash from merchandising. I don't think that Juve are actually gonna stick with him. They're, they've officially told him to look for a new club and he's out of the plans. Brandon, Brayden, what do you think? Where would you like to see him? Yeah, I think uh, what you said about the preseason is is definitely what's going on. They they told him that he wasn't part of the plan to find a new club, along with several other other midfielders. And then they realized, hey, wait a minute, we're playing preseason in the U.S. Let's let's tell him that he can be part of our plans, give him a chance to prove himself. When in reality, they just want fans to show up for him. But yeah, I, the rumors are difficult ones because. Galatasaray, I'm glad he rejected that. That would have been just horrible for everyone. Atalanta seems a bit weird. I'm not sure why they're interested in him, to be honest. Uh, it's just not a rumor that makes sense to me. Dortmund's never going to happen because he's a former Schalke player. And Villa seems all right. I don't know if he's deserving of it, especially considering how he played last season at Leeds. But I'd be happy if he ended up with Villa. I think he could definitely do a job under Unite Emery. That's fair. I think the Brighton rumors, which we all liked, uh, they've died out a little bit. They've said, uh, I, I've seen Deserby say that he, they're going to be meticulous with their budget. They like to, you know, spend little and sell for a lot. McKinney doesn't really have a lot of resale valid, uh, value. So, I mean, we'll see. Uh, and Atalanta, the reason why they're in for in the market is Ederson, the Brazilian, is going back to Brazil. He's going to Atlético Mineiro. So they're going to have a, a spot there. Maybe that's why they're looking for him. But again, he's going to have to take a huge pay cut. I'm not sure Wes is the type of guy to do that. And that's fair as well. But Jeff, where would you like to see him out of Borussia, Aston Villa and Atalanta? Or would you like to see him maybe try to fight for a spot at Juve? How do you see the situation? Well, um, well, for one thing, um, but the Premier League, he's not fit for, um, for the love of the Premier League, if I'm going to be honest. You know, um, if anything, he's he's kind of slow um, and and he's definitely not deserving of an Ast of a spot in Aston Villa, especially with Unai Emery's um, standards for for um, you know uh, high level players. And um, I mean, same with Serie A wouldn't be bad. Uh, we thought that um, um, it, it, he was maybe going to have a redemption shot at Juve, but that's not the case. Um, Preseason, we'll m maybe see a little bit of him, and then he'll be gone. Um, Atalanta, I mean, it, it's it's a good move for him to relaunch his career. And finally, Dortmund, that's never happening in a million years. The, um, there's, there's a higher chance of Dor another Dortmund player going to Bayern than McKenney even stepping foot, um, you know, at, at um, the Signal Laduna Park. But overall, I would I would say Atalanta is the best option out of the three. That's fair. Akil, do you agree or do you think that the Prem is still the best option for McKinney and that's where he can shine the most? 
I think、um, the Prem would be the league that McKenny can go to to develop and improve the most as of now because he's really dropped off from、uh, previous years where he used to be much more fit and helpful to his teams. And there's no solid, there's no actual solid links right now. But、um, all I see is rumors to Aston Villa, and I don't think that's a good move because.、Um, They recently signed Yuri Tielemans from Leicester, and they also have a really strong defensive midfield with Bubakar Kamara and Douglas Luiz. And for Dortmund, that could be possible because there's no loyalty in football these days, and you can't you can't bank on players go,、um, choosing not to go to one club because they used to play for their rival anymore. Because that's just not how football works anymore. So I think. In my opinion, we'll just let things pan out. All right, that's fair. Yeah, it is a good point to bring. I, I think that fan rejection is perhaps something that Schalke would would maybe take into consideration. But yeah, I think that out of these ones,、uh, either Villa or Borussia would would be the best one. I agree with you, Akil. But we'll see. Hopefully, he's not loyal. <laughs> that would be nice for his career. I think. Now, next, let's go to Des, another player that. It's in a similar situation, but he's gonna get a chance at preseason for Barca, reportedly. So, at least、uh, he's had some、uh, links with Fulham, Palace, and Man United. Hot take: I think he can be better than Wan-Bissaka.、Uh, it's just my personal biased opinion. I really like Dest, but yeah, the Barca preseason is basically gonna define his、uh, his future. I hope that he stays in Barca. I think that's the best one for him. Just stay there, prove prove his value. I think that he can definitely carve out a spot. And the starting lineup, and Braden, what do you think? Do you think that it's best for him to go to the Prem, the Fulham Palace, or United, which I think is a little bit wild, but and won't happen? Or would you like to watch Des fight for his spot at Barca? Yeah, I think fighting for his spot at Barca is the perfect thing he can do, because coming off this last season, which it was an absolute nightmare for him, not playing at Barca, going out to Milan, not playing at all there. He, he, the fact that he wants to fight for his spot shows that he actually has ambition and he really wants to be there, which is a huge thing. And I think their options at right back are a little thin. I mean, Kounde and Araujo are both very good, but they're both center backs. They don't have an out and out right back that can play. Like Sergio Roberto is getting on; he's not the same player he used to be. So I think in terms of fit, Barca is the, the best option. The other ones I don't really get. Fulham, Kenny Tete was one of their best players last season. It doesn't really make sense. I mean, they seem to love buying Americans, so from that aspect, I get it. But other than that, I don't really see a spot for him there. Palace is interesting because I think they could do it with an upgrade at right back, but that would probably just mean less play time for Richards. So kind of a, a win lose situation there for U.S. players. And Man United just doesn't make sense at all. I mean, they get linked to every player in the world, regardless. But coming off a season where he didn't play at all at AC Milan, there's no way he would play at all for Man United either. Yeah, I agree.、Uh, Jeff, what do you think? Stay put at Barca or try to get a move to the Prem? Okay,、um, looking into、um, you know the the connections with Dest.、Um, Like Britain say,、um, it wouldn't make sense for him to go to Fulham. Well, only the、uh, the the American agenda. That's the only thing that makes this, you know, somewhat logical. But he's not starting over Tete, who's uh, like uh, like Britain said, one of their best players last season.、Uh, very solid right back. We know we want him to have playing time.、Uh, Man United,、uh, you know, they're pretty much linked with anyone that can actually kick a ball nowadays. And、um, lastly, you know, I want him to get a redemption shot at Barca. Because well, I'm not a fan of、um, from a Barca fan. I'm not a fan of、uh, you know Kunde and Araujo playing on that spot. They're only good at defending, you know. And and Desi offers a lot more、um, attacking quality than those two can ever do combined. And、um, he can he、um, Chabi seems to、um, you know、um, see something in him that we obviously all see. So I said, why not? You know, he's got to go for it.、Um, he seems determined. And he's got the mentality. He proved it over in Nations League, and I just want to see him do well. Say, Barca. All right, we've all agreed on that. Akil, what's your take? Do you th- agree with us? Stay at Barca, or do you think it's better for for Dest to get a move? And do you think that realistically he could start for Barca? 
Yeah, Barca is my number one spot for Des because um, as long as Xavi is willing to be, give him another chance, I think it's perfect for him because um, Barca also don't have another right back that they can use. They only have makeshift right backs, and their starting right back is Jules Conde, and he's also a makeshift right back. But Xavi put put him in that position to succeed. And for other links, I don't really believe them. There's there's not been any solid reports. And um, it would be a big risk to go abroad since um, he's been at Barca for a much longer time. He uh, he knows the culture there, and Barca just won the league, and he'd be playing around much better players. And hopefully, that can make him develop into a better player. All right, let's hope that happens. I'm really rooting for Des. I think he has the capability to do it, and I can't wait to watch him next season. But we mentioned Fulham. This next player has been linked to him, to them. Uh, reportedly agreed on personal terms. Musa, the guy definitely needs a move. I think it's for sure. We're not going to watch him at Valencia ever again. He's been linked to Fulham and AC Milan. Uh, reportedly on really advanced talks on personal terms. I mean, that's easier to agree, though. It's harder. Uh, it's easier said than done because Milan have an offer for him, but reportedly the add-ons are something that they're trying to rely on, but Valencia wants more money. Brayden, do you think that Moose is going to end up at AC Milan or Fulham? I would personally like to watch him play at Fulham. I think it just fits him better. I think he could get some minutes and be eased into action. And what do you think? Yeah, I think from a fit uh, standpoint, Fulham's definitely the better option. He obviously has a lot of English ties. I mean, he still has the English accent. Grew up in the Arsenal Youth Academy, and he'd be familiar with a lot of his of the players he'd be playing with, not only from England but also from the national team, obviously. And I think the system he would be a pretty good fit in. But it seems like he's more focused on AC Milan, which I think is a shame. And that whole transfer saga has been really weird. Like it looked like it was gonna happen. And then they kind of backed off a little bit. And then Milan signed another midfielder and then still decided to go back in for Musa, which I don't really think makes sense. I don't think he'd play a lot there. And it, I don't even know if a fee's going to be agreed because Valencia want a lot of money. We know Italian clubs traditionally are very cheap. And I don't think AC Milan are going to be willing to pay a 25 million like Valencia want. So I, I don't see that transfer working out from any standpoint, honestly. And I think Fulham would be a good option for him. Agreed. I think it's interesting to note that both these clubs, uh, I, I don't like to say this, but they're probably looking at Musa as an option to fill their quota. Both Fulham because he's a homegrown player. He counts as a homegrown player in the Prem. And for AC Milan, since he holds an Italian uh, passport as well. So and they are, now Italian clubs are obligated to have a certain amount of uh, Italian players on the roster for match day. So I would just like to see him at Fulham. I think they would use him a little bit more. It makes more sense. But Jeff, do you agree or would you like to watch Musa join Pulisic at Milan. Um, well, um, I was I was a bit skeptical about the Milan move because, you know, they're just signing midfielders, you know, they're overcrowding that position and we want Musa to get playing time with Milan. He wouldn't he wouldn't be seen all that much of playing time. If anything, he'll just be used as a rotational player. Um, and at Fulham, it definitely makes sense given the ties he has with, um, in, um, you know, the Premier League, uh, academy setup and also um ties in general with other players that he's familiar with you know he's um he's very um familiar with um uh, with how the how the premier league plays even though he he hadn't played but it's it's england so it'll definitely not be nothing that new that he's uh that he has to overcome and yeah um i definitely think he can he can fight for a starting spot in fulham yeah, especially if they try to decide uh, to sell Palinha, which, I mean, I, I, they're asking for a ridiculous fee, but still, uh, it's nice that you guys mentioned the homegrown factor because he, I mean, it's London as well. I forgot to mention that. So he probably feels at home, has a lot of friends, and he won't see as much racism as he saw in Spain and would see in Italy. If he goes to Cagliari, he's going to get called names. Akil, where would you like to see Musa play next season? Yeah, at this point, Fulham is the best option for me because, um, Milan, I originally wanted that, but after they sold to Nali, they bought a bunch of midfielders, including Loftus Cheek, um, Grinders. With the Tonali money, they've signed those two midfielders. And um, they're really stacked in that position already. At the six, they have Ben Acer and Grinders. And at the eight, they have Loftus Cheek and Rade Krunic. 
And I think at Fulham, especially if they decide to sell Palinha or if they decide to keep him, it would still be a good for, move for Yunus Musa because he could fill him. He could fill in at both the eight and the six for Harrison Reed or Palinha, and he he has some good competition over there. And it's not like he's guaranteed a starting spot, but it's a good fight, and I think he would develop there too. Oh yeah, and also to add on with uh, another midfield that, that Milan signed, they signed this player from Frosinero, Frosineri, uh, Briskiani. Wait, they signed someone from Frosinoni who? Yeah, Marco Briskiani. Why? He sucks. Uh, but, yeah, take a look. Yeah, I mean, I don't yeah, know. They're, they're probably. No, no, I, I, I believe it. It's just shock. All right, we've spoken about Musa, uh, dual national American English, and now let's go to the most primed American English dual net that we have. We have recruited recently, new star boy Balogun. This guy, I mean, I'm gonna, sorry guys, I'm gonna have to spend a while talking about all the options he has and all of the clubs that are interested. AC Milan, as we've seen, not really a huge fan of that, in my opinion. Uh, Inter Milan, I think that's a good one. He could partner up with uh, Lautaro, but he's not their eight plan. It's never nice to see that. But I think that Inter would actually be a good move. Olympique de Marseille, I think that's a good good option. Uh, we got Monaco in the league on as well. It's understandable. Braden called it. I mean, he's delivered in the league on, so maybe he'll he'll do well again. And these are nice clubs that are, have a good uh, you know stature for him. RB Leipzig, we've seen the drama unfold the entire window. It seems like it's hot and cold. We never know. And Crystal Palace and West Ham in the Prem. I'm a huge fan of him going to Palace or West Ham. I think that would be nice. There are also rumors about Chelsea and Brighton. I don't I don't see those happening, especially for the asking price that Arsenal put on him. 50 million, which they're not gonna get, in my opinion. I think that's it's crazy. Only another Prem club would pay that, but out of all these options, Braden, where would you like to see Ballo play and score some goals next year? Yeah, just quickly, Jeff, that midfielder you mentioned was leaving AC Milan, not going there. <laughs> it's a Jeff moment for me. It's all good. I mean, he, he's he been on loan for Frosinone previously, I think. Yeah, for Balogun, I mean, he's linked to basically every club in the world. It's kind of crazy how much interest he has. I don't think we've ever seen this for an American, which so it's, it's nice to see that. I think a lot of them are, are kind of false rumors. I mean, Leipzig, for one, definitely isn't going to happen now that they signed Lois Appenda. And yeah, a couple of the other ones, the Premier League one, like Brighton, for that price, there's no way they're signing, they're signing him. Chelsea, I mean, they're linked to everyone. It wouldn't surprise me to see Todd Bowley splash out 50 million on an American player, but I don't think it makes sense for for Balogun at least to go there. I think Inter Milan, they're, they're probably the most concrete option, and I think my favorite. It's unfortunate that he wasn't their first option, but it's looking like Lukaku is not going to go back, and they need another striker to partner with Lataro. So I think Balogun could actually do a pretty good job there, and it's a. It's a little step up from League One, but it's not the massive step up that the Premier League would be. And I think it'd be a pretty good stepping stone club, at least. I agree. I would love to watch Bellingham live for selfish reasons. I'm going to Italy every year, so that would be nice. But Jeff, as a Chelsea fan as well, I know you mentioned that you're a Barca fan as well in the same video. But as a Chelsea fan, do you think that this could happen? And if not, what of the other thousand options that Ballo has would you like to see him fit? I mean, there is only one way that I can that I can see that I can see this work uh, is that we might need another striker. But for fifty million on Balogun, that's one. No offense to him, he did really amazing last season. But just for one, you know, one season, it isn't worth the price, you know, and. You know, Inter Milan's the dream move, honestly. Monaco, um, it doesn't sound like a bad mood. He can definitely challenge for a starting spot there. Um, I don't know if Monaco is still going to stick with Wissam Ben Yedder, but, um, you know, who knows? He can maybe um, start over him. But Inter Milan's just the dream move, you know. Lukaku, once again, uh, starting, you know, controversy as usual. Uh, that could definitely play in his favorite partner with Lautaro Martinez. And, uh, yeah, with the Premier League, I don't know. I see one more season in and um you know in the top five league, and then move to the Premier League. That would definitely work in his favor. And 
But yeah, the other teams, Leipzig, not happening. They just sent a striker. Um, Marseille, I mean, I prefer Monaco better if, if I'm being honest. But yeah, I don't know. I'm just really hoping that Inter Milan, they, they, they just, you know, make up their mind and just put an offer that can please um, Arsenal's, uh, you know, um, needs. All right. I think Arsenal are notoriously bad sellers, so I'm hoping and banking on that, that they're just going to accept a way lower fee than they've estimated before. But Akil, you're a Chelsea fan as well. I mean, these guys have given good reasons why it's not going to happen, but would you like to see it? And out of the other options in the Prem, Palace, West Ham, which one would you prefer? Or do you think Palace should just go to Italy and score some goals in Serie A? Okay, first of all, from my Chelsea point of view, I don't want him because I think Nicholas Jackson's a better player than Belligan. And for 50 million, I don't think it's the right price. And the one club I see that's best fit for Belligan is Fulham because I saw that Mitrovic has um, recently agreed personal terms with a Saudi club for 40 mil. Um, the transfer fee is 40 mil, but he agreed personal terms. And they're going to look for a striker very soon. And I think Balogun fits that perfectly. It's a prem move. He starts. And for Inter Milan, I think that's a horrible transfer. They have, um, they are, remember, they already got uh, Marcus Turam from Borussia Mönchengladbach. And they already have market, um, Joaquin Correa and Lautaro Martinez. So if you add Balogun there, I doubt he, he regularly starts. That's fair, Akil. That's a good shout. I mean, it's just, uh, I think that the Mitrovic one, it's, it's a good argument, but not for the reasons of him moving. I think it's just more about the just really unstable situation that he got at the club. He said he, he's come out and said he's never going to play for them again. Yeah, I was going to say that. To him, it's really easy to agree on personal terms with any Saudi club. Yeah, They're going to throw the entire world of money at you. Yeah, so, I mean, if anything, he's going to pull a Ziyech and the transfer is going to fall through. No, yeah, I mean, Ziyech's tra transfer fell through because he failed the medical. Yeah, I know, but yeah, I just I just wanted to, you know, use that but as a pun. Money talks. Yeah, I mean, it, I I see that's a good shout, but I haven't seen him link to to Fulham, but it would be nice. I don't think that they have the the cash to do it, but it would be a good move. I agree with that. Yeah, that's Moving another, on to the, another if they player. Sell that has a lot of, if they sell yeah. Mitrovic, they get 30 to 40 mil. Yeah, it's going to be hard to see you know, back yeah. for, for Mito because I, I think that the yeah. way he's come out is pretty pretty strong and uh, really incisive. But to on to an ex another player that has a lot of interest from the Prem, reportedly Malik Tillman. Uh, Brighton and Brentford in for him. I think that Brentford is nice. I mean, for obvious reasons, you know, Tony with the entire batting, batting scandal, I think there's a spot there. I'll doubt that he would start, but it's a good option for them. It falls within their budget as well. Uh, and Brighton... I think it fits the profile of the club, but I'm not sure about how, how well he would do there. Frankfurt and Stuttgart as well. Stuttgart, apparently a really hot rumor. And they've spoken and agreed on terms reportedly. I mean, you see all types of things on build or kicker. Uh, one time they say it's almost done, another it's not. Regardless, Brayden, where would you like to see Tillman? Do you think that with a good season at any of these clubs, he has the capability to break into the USMNT roster as well? I'll just leave that question out there. Yeah, I think the biggest thing for Malik Tillman here is to make a step up from Rangers to uh, a decent level club in the Bundesliga or Premier League. It doesn't really matter to me. And the biggest thing is he has to get playing time. It's he, he can't go to too big of a club. Like I don't think Frankfurt would be the right option for him. I, I think they're too good. I think they're a step above his level. But a team like Stuttgart would be perfect. Uh, a bottom half Bundesliga team that he would probably start every week for and get some good experience before potentially moving on to a bigger club. Brighton, I mean, we all know how good their development is. I think if he goes there, I trust Deservey to do to work his magic and, and make him a lot better. Brentford, I think, is, is another good option. I haven't seen any really bad rumors for Malik Tillman besides the Frankfurt one. So at the end of the day, for me, as long as he's playing, and I think he could potentially break into the US roster, as long as he's getting minutes and consistently performing in one of these two leagues. Yeah, it's really important for him to get minutes as well, because next year I think he's a player that's most likely going to be in the Olympic roster, so I'd love to see him 
get some minutes. And I agree, any of these clubs are really good rumors. And it's nice to see that after one pro season, he has this much interest for him. So, I mean, props to him. Jeff, what do you think? Do you think a Prem move is better or a uh, Bundesliga move? I agree with Braden, by the way. I think that Frankfurt is way too big of a step up. But Jeff, yeah, what do you think? Definitely. Um, I'm just going to point out straight away, um, the reason why Frankfurt won't be good, well, um, here's the thing. They're overstacked. I mean, you know, Paxton, Aronson, another uh, U- U.S. player, is not seeking a lot of playing time there. So it, it, it would be, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, he he seeks some minutes, but you know we want Tillman to you know get more like you know more minutes than Paxton, right? Not trying to mix it up. But anyways, um, you know Brentford and and um, Stuttgart they're not bad options, but the safest bet for me would to go to Stuttgart just because you know he is a German, um, he is German and he's fairly familiar with the league, and it would be a safer option than to go to the Prem, even though Brentford is is a suitable team for him. You know, you don't, we don't want to take the risk if, you know, if all goes wrong and he can't adapt to the Premier League. All right. Akil, you watch a lot of the Prem. Do you think it is too too big of a step up for, for Tillman? I know that Scottish Premier League has had some good imports and exports in the past, but what do you think? Do you think that a Stuttgart move would be better for him? And considering that it was his first pro season um, at Rangers, he did really well and got some great numbers there. And I think he really should challenge himself himself to go to a higher league. And I think Bundesliga is the best. Prem right now, it's a bit of a stretch. He's not going to get consistent minutes. And he's a pretty versatile player, but I don't I don't think he's Prem level yet. And for the Eintracht Frankfurt link, that's not that's not a bad link at all, considering um, Kamada is a free agent right now. And their only other options are Paxton, Goetze, and Lindstrom. And Lindstrom might get sold this summer, and he's their only other alternative. Alternative, if he could get a loan to Frankfurt, maybe that would be a good option. And um, pretty much any other Bundesliga club that has a plan for him, I'd, I'd be accepting. Nice, nice, good takes. Uh, we've talked about a player. I mean, Tillman. I think that everyone's overseeing the fact that he could just stay at Rangers for one more year. I wouldn't mind seeing that. This other player, Booth, I see him linked to PSV as the Xavi Simmons replacement, possibly. I just, I see all these rumors for Booth. I think staying one more year at Utrecht would be all right. They want to cash in on him, but I think that's just going to be fine for his career. He hasn't really solidified an entire season playing really well with consistent time. He's another player that's looking as sort of a fringe player for the main squad. Brayden, what do you think? Do you think this PSV link is good? I mean, we're not going to talk about the Man United one. That's done. I'm not going to mention that one anymore. Yeah, like you said, all of these past links, I think a lot of them have kind of been made up, not really have much having much likes to them. And before the PSV link came in, I was all for him staying another year at Utrecht. I, don't, I still don't think it'd be a bad option at all. Just prove himself consistently in the Eredivisie for one more year. It's definitely not a bad thing. But Xavi Simmons is going to be on the move. He's gone to Leipzig on loan from PSG. And I think Taylor Booth would be a pretty good replacement playing with Ricardo Pepe. And they can help each other get into the USMNT squad even because we know they've both been left out. Neither of them were at the World Cup, obviously. And they both have a point to prove definitely to Greg coming back as manager. So I think if they could work together, play together at club level, help each other grow, I think it'd be pretty beneficial. That's fair. That's fair. It'd be nice. Uh, I, I don't know how I forgot that him and Pepe would be playing together. That'd be nice. Some chemistry building up there. Jeff, are you a fan of Booth moving to PSV or stay put at Utrecht? I mean, definitely. Um, you know, P- uh, uh, like Britton said, Chavi Simmons, you know, leaving, uh, you know, back to PSG, weirdly enough. You know, like he could have stayed at least one more season at PSV. You know, he literally just went, changed to another PS team, except his G, better team. You know, and especially leaving on loan to Leipzig. I mean, fair play to him. I mean, he, he proved himself um, with uh, PSV. But anyways, back to Booth. Um, it, either option would be good. But um, team-wise, um, him going to P- PSV would be a definitely a bigger upgrade. You know, he can have a chance to potentially make it to the Champions League um, if PSV make it. But right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say one more, se- one more season at Utrecht. You know, just so, you know, he can consistently 
you know, uh, shoot, shoot for bigger, um, you know, uh, higher stat numbers. And yeah, just overall cement, cement himself in the league as one of the best players. I'm going to say he might be one of the best midfielders in the league. And yeah, I just want to see him improve and shoot for um, a potential a, a roster spot with the team. With right, the national team. Nice. Akil, would you like to see Booth go to another another PS team, the PSV, or would you like to see him stay at Utrecht another season? That was good, Jeff. Honestly, I don't know if it was intentionally meant to be this funny, but it was pretty funny to me. Akil, what do you think? Honestly, I don't mind him staying at Utrecht to get um, another solid season and hopefully um, get better numbers than the previous season. But to be honest, I also don't mind him going to PSV since um, PSV lost out due to horrible negotiation on Xavi Simmons with a 6 mil buyback clause that was activated by PSG and now loaned back to RB Leipzig. Um, I think with the with the money they have now, um, Taylor Booth would not be very expensive and he could be a solid replacement for Xavi Simmons. And they also play similar styles and I think that could also work out. And Honestly, I'm open to wherever he goes, unless it's not a bad move where he won't ever play. All right, uh, Trusty. I mean, this guy this has done really well last season, so that's why he has a lot of interest. From Rangers, eh, I think that he should just stay. Even championship level is better than the Scottish Premier League. I think championship is going to be crazy this year. And Rangers, Ipswich, and Birmingham looking to sign him. I think he should just stay at Birmingham, perhaps. Uh, the fans love him there. He was a good player. That's my preferred move. Brayden, where would you like to see Austin move? Honestly, I think all of the three of these links are, are good options for him. Like you said, the, the championship seems to be a solid level for him. I think he's shown in Arsenal preseason that he's not up to the level of of the Premier League just yet. Maybe uh, a bottom tier team he could uh, do a job with, but I think for now, going back to the championship would be good. Rangers as well. We've seen the Scottish League do wonders to some of our players. Like CCV went there, became probably the best center back in the league, and I think Trusty is about the same level as him, so I wouldn't mind that at all. Plus, the added factor of playing in Europe is huge for experience, but staying at Birmingham, a great option as well. I mean, he was their player of the season last year, and he would just just continue to make them better. And Ipswich are an intriguing option as well. Coming up from League One, a, th a lot of people are saying they're going to actually challenge for the playoffs, which I'm not sure if I'm there just yet, but I do think they have the potential to be better than Birmingham. So I wouldn't be mad at that either. Jeff, where would you prefer to see Trusty at out of these three clubs? All right, let's look into this uh, very well. Um, Rangers, um, you know, although it's a bit of a downgrade in teams, um, I mean, the only beneficial part, he, the only beneficial part is him, you know, potentially playing in Europe. You know, Champions League, unless if Rangers gets their ass kicked again and finish last in the in their group. But, you know, th we've seen that the Scottish League is very beneficial for our players. Um, next up, Ipswich. Ipswich isn't a bad move either. Like you said, Braden, they did pretty good in League One. And they could they can actually be better than Birmingham. You know, that's that's a fair argument, you can say. But yeah, but the best option for me would be a stand at Birmingham. One more season and then maybe get a move to potentially a Premier League team, a very a mid-table Premier League team, it wouldn't be bad if, if he stays one more season at Birmingham. That's fair. Akil, where would you like to see Trusty go to? And do you think that, where do you think in your pecking order he is for center backs for the USMNT main roster? I think he definitely deserves to be in the main roster from his performances recently. And from my preferred um, destination for Trusty is Luton Town. And they're really... Um, with center backs, they're really um, th their depth is really bad, and they only have um, Tom Lockyer, who, who's I think Prem level. And Trusty from Arsenal's preseason, I didn't think he was bad at all, and I think he should get a Prem move. And I, it, I don't think he starts, but still a Prem a Prem loan to get him the experience and the play time to see what the Prem's like. I think that's that would be beneficial for Trusty and his future for the for the national team and club level as well. 
Moving on to now the fringe players we've talked about, spoken about the main ones. I mean, Booth and Tillman, they're sort of there, but I think they're knocking on the door. Going on to Vasquez, played the Gold Cup. We're going to mention some Gold Cup players now. Vasquez is reportedly back on the radar for Borussia Mönchengladbach. I don't know if this is going to happen. I don't think it will. I don't think since you're going to, you know, release him. We can just go be quickly about these guys. Braden, do you think he's going to move and do you think he should move right now? Yeah, just to answer this quickly, it's not going to happen. I, we spoke about it in the last transfer video. He's staying at Cincy, definitely. I think he will get a move in the winter if the interest is still there. And I think it will be if he continues to replicate the form that he's had, especially last season with Cincy. But I, I respect Gladbach not giving up. I mean, they even went to see him play in Cincy, went to his house to negotiate with him. I, I respect the effort from them, but I think they need to realize that this transfer is not going not gonna to go through this summer. Yeah, what do you think, Jeff? Do you think he should move, and do you think it will happen? I agree with Braden. I don't see this happening. All right. But yeah, back to for speed them. through I mean, this. Just, yeah. Yeah. Um. Wait, is, that, is that it? Is that all you're gonna say? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. To speed through this. Um. No, it's not gonna happen. He's gonna be a locked up prisoner with FC Cincinnati. You know, uh, but they really just should have let him go in January. You know, it would have been a good move from him. He would have improved himself a lot more as a striker, but yeah, I don't see it happening. Maybe in the winter they can come back, but you got to respect the hustle from Munch and Gladbeck. They must really like him, you know, that they're not giving up. Yeah, he's going to be a locked up prisoner, maybe just like Jeff is back in jail now. No, I'm just kidding. Akil, how do you see this? Do you think that he's going to be stay, staying at Cincy or going to Borussia Munch and Gladbeck? And do you think he should try to get that move right now? Um, right now, obviously, it's not possible since since he um, rejected the transfer, since um, they sell, they sold Brenner to Udinese, and yeah, if the interest is still there in in the winter, it would be perfect for him to challenge himself. But uh, considering his form right now, it's not very ideal. So he has to really step up and do much better for Cincy, and maybe. Since you're the are at the top right now, so maybe if they win MLS Cup, that boosts his value, and maybe more clubs want him. And I think he just has a lot to improve on as a player. And um, Bundesliga right now might be a bit too high of a level for him, but as long as the deal goes through, it's perfect, and he can really improve at a tougher league. Yeah, I mean, talking about these Gold Cup players, I agree with you, by the way. Uh, Buzio to Pisa. Uh, reportedly, he wants to fight for his spot for uh, at Venezia, but he's not even on the match day roster for the friendly that's going to happen tomorrow against Genoa. So I don't know. And he's back in training. So, I mean, I feel for the guy. Uh, Antonelli, the sporting director, clearly doesn't rate him. And... Vanoli doesn't either. They've signed Itzes and Milanese to uh, midfielders. One of them's a CDM, so maybe that's a sign that the Tesman move may happen. Uh, Tesman's going to play with number 88. Really weird, so it shows that his squad number is <laughs> moving on to Itzes, so he's probably on the move. But Buzio to Pisa, do you guys like this rumor or not? I mean, it's a City A, cl a City B club that's mid-table. They should have gone up, honestly. They were in the playoff spots and even second place for majority of last season, but ended up falling through. Braden, do you think it's a good one for Gianluca? Yeah, it's really unfortunate for Buzio because he had so much potential going to Venezia when they were in Serie A. And I don't think he actually had too bad of a season in Serie A, but last year he just completely fell off a cliff. And it's clear that his time there is done. It's nice that he wants to stay showing ambition for probably the first time in a while. But ultimately, I don't think it's the right move. And going to another established Serie B club where he can get back his his uh, match quality a little bit and just get consistent minutes, try to revive his career a little bit. I think it'd be a good move. Yeah, I feel for him. And the way that he showed up for, for preseason, they, they even posted a video of him uh, doing warm-ups. He's always a monster at those. But training, he seemed really fit. He seemed really focused. Wasn't giggling and talking to other players. So, I mean, I feel for him. I would like to see him revive his career at Venezia, but it's probably not going to happen. Jeff, do you still rate Buzio? Do you think there's a way for him to revive his career and stay at Pisa, or he should just do whatever? Well, like Brayden said, he was... Not half bad when he first joined Venezia, you know, he was putting up good stat numbers, he was showing his quality, 
but then after when they got relegated to Serie B, maybe he wasn't feeling motivation, motivational. He, he was, he wasn't, you know, taking it serious just because they got relegated. You know, and now just now he's showing ambition here and there. He might be on the move. Um, either one worked for me, but I say stay and fight for a spot since he's showing that he's you know determined to put in the work and you know he wants to fight for a starting spot again. You know and. I see, I see Venetia can are um, going to need players like that, you know, if they want to um, have a chance to get promoted back to Serie A again. So I say stay. All right, that's fair. I mean, I, I hope he stays. Vanoli, the coach himself, was a player that was out of the squad for a while and came back when he was a player for Venezia. So maybe, maybe he has some sympathy for, for Buzio. Akil, do you believe in Buzio's potential? Do you think that this Pisa move could be good for him? It would be a loan, by the way. I mean, yeah, because when he first left um, Sporting Kansas City, I, I rated him. He was a decent player, and I think when he went to Venezia, he wasn't he wasn't really too bad. But this season, he had attitude issues. He really didn't. I I, I didn't think he cared enough, and that's why um, he lost his spot. And now he's um, getting links to Serie B clubs, and hopefully, if he just um, changes his attitude and puts a lot more effort into the game and um, eliminates distractions from the outside world, like partying in Venice and all that. Hopefully, he can he can fulfill his potential to um, half of what it was. Yeah, it would be nice to see. Uh, since we're talking about Buzio, let's just mention another player that was at the Gold Cup and has a contract with an Italian club, Reynolds. Waterloo got their offer re rejected. I mean, it's a shame to see, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, just go to go to a better league. There's a link I saw in Calcio Mercato for him to go to a Parma on loan. I'm a fan of that. Honestly, Reynolds at Parma on loan, I think that's a pretty good move. I don't know how, fair, how well he would do, but they always fight for promotion or get promoted. They made the playoffs last year. I think it'd be nice for him to be there. Are you guys a fan of this move or do you think that he should just stay put at Waterloo if, granted if they make another bid for him? Brandon, what do you think? I think staying at Westerlo wouldn't be necessarily a bad option for him. I mean, he played pretty well there out in Belgium, but I, it doesn't look like Roma are going to accept their offer. I just don't think they have the money at this point, which is a shame. And Parma, like you said, a pretty good team in Serie B, one of the best. And if he could help get them promoted, potentially, that'd be a huge boost to his resume to potentially get him a Serie A move uh, in the future after the season. So I think Parma would be a good option. Yeah, if they get promoted, it's nice for him to just stay there. I mean, I think there's a path for him to be a top five league player if he stays there and if this move does happen. Parma would definitely have the move to the, the money to do the wages for him. Jeff, what do you think? Do you think that he should just stay in Belgium or try to get the Serie B move? Definitely leave Belgium and go to Parma. Um, you know, um, he can, you know, gain some experience um, playing in Italy, definitely. And he can definitely improve himself after a disastrous um, Gold Cup. Well, you can say that, you know, most games he did good. But when we needed him most, he just disappointed, you know. And I, I wouldn't say it's it's surprising, you know. Just I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I would be surprised if you don't agree with me on that part, you know. Like he was just, he just didn't show the intensity that he did in the other matches. And you know, m moving to a better league, you can argue that Serie B is much better than the Belgian league that he's in. Um, yeah. But anyways, yeah, it would definitely help help him out. You know, he can uh, establish himself potentially as a starter at Parma, and if he does well. He could seek a Serie A move, or better yet, he can move to another league uh, again. And yeah, I'm all up for it. But, uh, Reynolds to Parma, let's make it happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the level is pretty similar for some part. I think there are like five or five to eight clubs that are better than the Belgium league. But Akio, what's your take? Do you think that he should try to get this loan? I mean, I think it'd be nice for him. Or do you think he just pursue maybe a, a move to another Belgium club or something? Um, honestly, I'm in the middle of um, playing a preseason with Roma and seeing how Jose rates him. And maybe um, if it's ideal for him, maybe he gets a permanent transfer to Parma. And since um, Parma don't have a proper right back, they have many left backs. And 
I think uh, Brian Reynolds would be a good fit uh, as a right back. Maybe not as a starter yet. Hopefully he gets going and over time he starts for them. And yeah, I think Parma is a solid move. Yeah, if it happens, I think it's the dream move for him. Uh, we're just going to briefly gonna mention, you guys can raise your hand if you want to participate on this one. Alan Senora, the monster, myth, legend, wants to go play Libertadores, but if he goes, he's going to play two games and get knocked out. He, he's reportedly being really close to Nacional. Where do you raise your hand? Do you think it would be a good move for him to go to the Uruguayan League? We'll go to Jeff afterwards. Yeah, I think his, his transfer to Juarez was just a catastroph catastrophic move for him. I don't understand why he went there in the first place, to be honest. I think he should have come to MLS, but it's too late for that. And I do think that South America suits him. I, I don't think he was bad at Independiente in Argentina when he was there. And Nacional, it's a step down in terms of the domestic league quality, but to still be playing abroad in Libertadores every year is, is a good experience. It's one of, one of my favorite competitions, personally, just on a bias level. And yeah, like you said, they'd get knocked out immediately, but they'll be playing Libre Stores every year, so I think it, it'd be a pretty solid transfer, and he just needs to go somewhere at this point, being a free agent. Yeah, Jeff, you raise your hand. Do you see a future for Senora to USMNT, or do you think that this move is a good one for him? But A team, definitely not. But B team, if he... All right. Um, anyways, to talk about this move, um, before I, I, you know, give my, um, you know, um, my verdict about if he has a future with the national team, you know, Juarez was just a disaster. You know, like, you no, know, like Braden said, leaving the Argentinian league, going down to Mexico, he could have came to the MLS. You know, maybe uh, pick up some some better form, you can say. But yeah, he only lasted months in Juarez, and him going to a team like Nacional, the Uruguayan league, and you know, going back to playing Libertadores. It's good because, you know, it shows that he has um, the South American, um, you know, he's very adept to the South American, uh, you know, uh, continent in general, you know, playing in Conebol, you know, he's very used to it. And, you know, he can definitely redeem himself with Nacional. Um, but yeah, but to say if, if he has a future with the national team, definitely not A team, um, maybe at best uh, C team again, a Gold Cup, if he, you know, redeems himself uh, with Nacional and may possibly help them out in the Libertadores. I don't think you make that much of a big impact, but, you know, he'll play his part and he'll definitely, you know, uh, I'm going to see this as a good tr move and transfer. He'll definitely redeem himself and maybe we'll see him again in the Gold Cup squad. If you guys want to raise your hand and tell me your take on this move for Johnny Cardozo, the Prem level player we have, the Tyler Adams backup. He's been linked to a move, finally, guys. Not his agents offering him to any, every club under the sun in Europe and not getting any response back. Fluminense, yeah, that's the most realistic move that's in for him. I reported at Lancia today. And um, <clears throat> at Lancia, it's a really... And Bola de Prata, another newspaper in Brazil, they are reporting that Johnny could be in for Fluminense. What do you guys think about this one? Braden, you raise your hand. Do you think it's a good one for, for Johnny? <laughs> yeah, just based off how he played for Internacional this season, as a Flamengo fan, I couldn't be happier about this. He's going to make Fluminense a lot worse. So that's always a good thing. But yeah, it's nice to see that he's getting interest from somewhere. Obviously, we've, we've heard a lot of fake rumors. Thanks, Tech. Thanks, uh, Johnny's agents. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think Brazil is the right spot for him. Honestly, I know he obviously he's Brazilian, basically like he was born in the US, but he's pretty much fully Brazilian. But I think just considering the reaction that the fans have every time he plays, I think getting out of there is the best thing for him. And I think the Portuguese league would be a great option. Just speaking the same language, obviously there's going to be differences going from country to country. But for the most part, it's the same thing. And I think he could do a decent job, just a completely new start at, at a, a mid-table Portuguese league club. Yeah, I think that they should have offered him to Estoril. That's a good club in Portugal, plays the Liga Nos, and there's a defensive midfielder, Basso, is a, a Paraná Academy product, that's why I know about him. He got sold, he, he went to uh, Vitória Guimarães. So I think there's a spot there for a CDM. Speaks the same language. I mean, it's a perfect move. Not that high of a step up, but 
people even answer him for him. Jeff, you raise your hand. What's your take about Johnny? Oh yeah, I raised my hand because you said Basso, and that's pretty much Cup. But anyways, um, you said Basso, so yeah, I just wanted to. Yeah, forget it. Okay, cut this part out. Anyways, um, so Johnny to Fluminense, um, uh, good news. Um, you know, for rivals of Fluminense, he'll make them a lot worse, definitely. You know, and like Braden said, he's. I don't consider him American. You know, no, he's like. He's a Brazilian full on, you know, sure, born in New Jersey, but he doesn't he doesn't even speak a lick of English, you know, if he if it would be a miracle if he can say, how bad am I? You know, how bad of a player am I? Am I overrated? Am I even rated at all? You know, if, if he can say those words, I I would find that definitely the best thing he's done in months, you know, at least speak English. That would be a big accomplishment for him. Definitely. Oh, Do wow. we not go a bit overboard on the Johnny? Just a little bit. I mean, I used to think I was like the biggest Johnny critic, but Jeff just took that spot. Akil, what's your take? Do you want to have a take about Johnny? Do you think it's a good move for him to stay in Brazil or try to get to get a move to Europe? Do you want to yeah, keep firing honestly, shots at Johnny? Honestly, I don't really have a preference and I don't really rate him that much, but I don't hate him as a player. I think a move to Liga Portugal would be good. Maybe a club like Braga. Next, raise your hand if you want to have a say about these guys. Uh, well, it's actually only Julian Gressel to the crew. Pretty irrelevant move, in my opinion. And uh, anyone wants to say anything about that? No, no shocker at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, for Gressel, I think it's a good move. I mean, obviously, he's he's not a player that we, we see as an A-teamer, and I don't think he ever will be. But... He's, he's a good option for the Gold Cup. I thought he had a, a, a decent tournament. Definitely it could have been worse considering some of the performances of our other players. But getting out of Canada is always a good thing. And going to a, a crew team that are pretty solid, especially in the attack, I think he's going to have a, a lot of help with Zellerayon and uh, Kucho Hernandez. And he's, he's definitely going to contribute to a lot of goals and potentially even challenge for an MLS Cup. So uh, it's a good move for him. I wonder how Arjun feels about this move. Yeah, yeah. I think his take on this. But... <laughs> yeah, oh, well. I've talked to yeah, him. He's, he's, he's over the moon about it. He, he, he's he would have been idea. sitting here for five minutes if Arjun was here. Five minutes, guaranteed. Yeah, we would hear all about the crew's tactics, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. But, the, uh, the, foot, the football genius. All right, thank you so much, guys, for watching this fire in the video. If you did so, thank you, Brayden. Thank you, Akil and Jeff. Uh, it was really fun to do this. We'll see if there is the need to make another one, maybe a transfer deadline week one for you guys in the future. We appreciate all of your viewers and all of the new subscribers and the likes and the comments. We are loving to watch all the interaction in the comments. Just please keep it respectful. Again, we saw some beef lately, but thank you again. And make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends if you'd like to as well. We'll see you next time. Peace. Don't stop the praises. You know, keep them coming. I'll allow those.